we're, we're getting ready for winter and as this turns out this is our, our last class uh, online class um, before Christmas well also <laughs> as usual since I'm doing it in my uh, living room we're we're pausing the classes until after New Year's Day so not New Year's Day but that week following is when we're going to resume our classes and uh, so anyway so this is the last one for this year Christmas New Year's and then we're back at it so today I'm going to be introducing some aspects of the winter protocol there being five seasons in the uh, Qigong approach that I am uh, working with and so this well this is no, no surprise but this one is winter but the five seasons we have spring no surprise there it's when things start to grow on the trees and the leaves and the grass and all the different plants you know get started up and they they're sprouting up out of the earth and the next season is early summer so as the name implies we break summer into two chunks so early summer is when you have all the flowering and blossoming happening so we've gone through the sprouting and the building up and, and now in early summer it's the uh, blossoming time and when new potential is is being exhibited and then late summer is when the fruiting happens so the, the the bees come around and pollinate everything and we end up with the beginning stages of fruit so we have an apple tree in our backyard that would make it you know the apple blossoms and then the bees come around and they pollinate all that stuff and then we get you know the blossoms go away but they're replaced by tiny tiny little green apples and over the late summer the apples get bigger and bigger and they turn from little hard green little knobby things to you know a big handful uh, of an apple that starts to turn red and has red and green and gold colors in it as well and so that's what's going on in the in the late summer and in the fall well we harvest those apples and that's the case with us as well and we end up making you know apple jelly apple pie apple sauce you know lots of different things with with apples and then finally in the winter season which is where we're at right now you know, the the leaves have dropped they did that in the fall as well and we're in our hibernating time so this is a time to sort of rest and restore and so, so today we're going to be looking through you know working through those things so enough rambling on about this stuff we've come here to do some qigong things so i'm going to head back there and we're going to get going with our beginner qigong class and we're going to start with as usual Pull down the heavens so it's in him. Gather the chi from the earth. Reach up to the heavens. Look to the right hand. Lengthening, opening all the joints. Stretching up. And then exhale. Draw the chi down to the earth. So inhale. We look to the right hand. Turn and look to the left hand. And then exhale. We come back to where we started. Last one. and we're going to start well start we just started we're going to continue with our three-part breath and so three parts down here in the abdomen so you want to fill this up as much as possible and then we add on by breathing in some more and expanding the chest filling the lungs even further and then finally we we top it up again sipping in a little bit more breath and then finally we pause for a second and then we exhale all that breath completely and we breathe in through the nose we breathe out through the nose and so we start here so inhaling inhale <coughs> and you're probably going to cough which i do quite frequently because what we're doing is we're filling the lungs completely stretching them out and 
And one last one. All right. So now we're going to look at our standing posture for this season, the winter season. And it is, it, the winter season associated with water and the energy is sort of, is sort of downward flowing into the earth. And so our standing posture is standing in a river. So once again, we start with our foundation here, our feet directly under our hips, double hand width between the feet, and the feet more or less going, pointing straight ahead, the knees ever so slightly bent. Now, put weight in the toes. We build awareness of what's going on with our feet here, which helps with our balance over time. So weight in the toes, shift back, put weight in the heels. So the small triangle, big toe, little toe, ball joint, large triangle, big toe, little toe, heel. So we, we put weight in the toes, but keep the heels on the earth. Put weight in the heels, keep toes on the earth. And now come to the center. Equal weight on the heels and toes. Bend the knees ever so slightly. So we want to have a soft knee joint here, not a locked one. Grab the hips at the top of the hips. Push down with the thumbs on the back. Tuck the tailbone into the body. Pull the pelvic floor up. Pull the belly button in. Lift the ribs a little bit. Lift the gaze. Look to the horizon. Now take the top of the head and reach it up to the heavens. Just imagine you're, you're a puppet and the marionette is pulling up on the string and lengthening the body out. That's what's going on here. So you want to be nice and tall. Now bring the hands up about the same height as the elbows out to the side. Now bring the elbows towards each other behind the back. Going to feel a big stretch up here. And now drop the hands so they're out to the side. Imagine a golf ball in your armpit, so the hands are just out to the side. Palms facing forward. Inhale, drift forward onto the toes. We're pushing against the stream of the river we're standing in. And then exhale. We let the hands, we let the water, the current push us back. Inhale, we drift forward onto the small triangle. Exhale, we drift back. So you breathe in for a count of four, you breathe out for a count of four seconds, in through the nose, out through the nose. So inhaling, exhale, inhaling, Exhaling. Inhale, we push against the current. Exhale, we let the current push us back. So we gaze to the horizon. And we'll do one more breath. And we'll let the arms relax. Now one of the things, that Qigong, Tai Chi, Yoga, they all are like mindful-based practices. And so one of the things we, one of the techniques we use to engage the mind in our practice here, you know, we did it in the standing in the water pose, is we coordinate our breath with our movement and we also use our gaze. In this one, since we're standing still, we're focusing on our hands and the image of pushing the current, pushing against the current and letting the current push us back. So we focus on that imagery with our mind and so we bring attention to our hands. And we drift forward and we count to four. We want to finish the movement and the count and the breath all at the same time. And then exhale, we drift back onto the heels. So once again, finish the breath, finish the movement, finish the count, 
all at the same time. And we do that throughout the entire practice. Now we're going to do a few warm-up things here to sort of help loosen the body up a little bit. So we're going to start out with shaking the nine gates. Our hands are wet. Shake the water off the hands. Then we get the elbows, wrists, and shoulders going together here. So this is three of them. And I frequently, you know, the shoulders get neglected, so I remember to move them over time. And then we add in the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So this is six. There's three more, the lower back, the ribs, and the neck. So inhale as we face front. Exhale as we turn and look over the shoulder. Inhaling. Exhale. Inhale here. Exhale. And we'll do one more cycle. And we're back here at the front. So that was shaking the nine gates. You probably got some tingling going on in the, in the hands, in the wrist, maybe a little bit up the arm. And we have some color in our palms as well. And what we're looking to do with this particular movement is get the energy, get the chi out to the extremities. We're looking to warm up the hands, warm up the feet as part of our qigong practice and get the chi distributed evenly throughout the body. And next is swinging arm series. And so for this one, we start with, we call this, you know, one name is drumming and another name is dragon swings his whiskers. Turn the head, look over the shoulder, just let the arms swing from side to side. And we're tapping the top of the kidneys, just letting the arms swing, turning the head, having a look behind. Ideally, eventually, you want to be looking at the same spot behind. And we'll do two more like this. And now, cleaning the dragon's whiskers. So we come up to the shoulder, and the other hand comes to the kidney, and we're still turning and looking behind. And now, flinging sleeves. And we point behind, still tapping the shoulder. The hands down in front, up and back. Slight pause at the back. And we do two more like this. All right, and we come back to the front. So that is the swinging arm series. And now we're going to look at, well, no, we're going to do the, uh, the crescent moon. So we want to have, be in our stacking of the bone stance here. So bend the knee, have the hip over the ankle with this leg straight, and that's what determines the width that you need to be. Like this obviously isn't working, and here I can go too far. So you want to find the spot where the hip stays over the ankle. 
because we do have some side to side movement here. So crescent moon, so put all the weight over here, take this foot, turn it, lift the toes, point to the horizon. This hand comes across and this hand comes up like so. So inhale, exhale. And now we pause the breath as we move to the opposite side. Inhale, exhale. Inhaling, exhale. Inhale. Inhale as we shift. Exhale. We'll do one more cycle. And that cycle starts here. Last side. And we come back to the center. And so now we're going to move on to the eight pieces of brocade, the, you know, our focus for this class. So we're back to our narrow stance here. Remember the double hand width between the feet. And so the first one, the first movement in the eight pieces of brocade series is double hands hold up the heavens. So you interlace the fingers if that works for you. If it doesn't, you just point the hands towards each other. And we want to bring the hands up over the head and push them up to the heavens. So we have nice straight arms here. Again, if that works for you. One of the things we do in Qigong is we work within the limitations that our body is bringing to the practice today. You might have been having more success yesterday or the day before or whenever or maybe even tomorrow or the day after that. And, but today is whatever works. So don't beat the body up. Respect the limits. So top of the hand to the head. Inhale here. Exhale, and we lift the heels. We push up. Inhale. Exhale, we push off to the side. Keep the shoulders one above the other. Inhale. Exhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale for a count of four. Exhale for four. So we're going to do one more cycle like this, and then we'll do the twisted one. Now the twisted one, it starts at normal. And now we add the twist. The hands stay up. Exhale, we turn and we look 
behind, we look over the shoulder, nice twist in the spine. Inhale, back to the front. Exhale. And exhale, we let the arms come on down. So now we're going to do this twice more. So inhale, we bring the hands up, interlace the fingers. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, the hands stay up. Exhale, we turn and we look behind, we look over the shoulders, we twist the spine. Inhale, back to the front. Exhale. Exhale, let the hands come on down. So last cycle like this. Inhale here. And that was double hands hold up the heavens. And the next one is King removes his helmet. There's also a twisted variation to this one as well. So we bring the back of the hand to the kidney on the opposite side. Bring the other hand behind the head, reaching for the ear. Now bring the shoulder blades towards each other. Turn the head, look to the shoulder. Inhale, we look to the earth, push the elbow up to the heavens. Exhale, we look to the heavens. And then we pause the breath as we rotate. Inhale. Exhale. The arms come around. Bring the shoulder blades together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhaling. Exhale. So we'll do one more cycle like this, and then we'll look at the inter, inter the twisting one. <clears throat> and now the twisted one. So we come here. And what we do is, as we look, we turn and we look behind the hip as we look down to the earth. Inhale, we look to the heavens as we come back to the front. Rotate the arms. Inhale, we look behind the shoulder. Exhale. Inhale. We'll do one more cycle like this. Inhale. And that cycle starts here. Inhale, the elbow pushes up. 
we look behind the hip. Exhale, we look to the heavens. And we continue to the other side. Inhale. Exhale. And we come on down. So next is divide heaven and earth. And there happens to be a twisted variation for this one as well. But we'll start out with our normal just facing front. And then we'll add in the twist after that. So we hold a ball. We turn the ball over. We push down. We push up. And we draw the fingertips towards each other as we push the wrists away. So it's exhale here as we look to the upper hand. Inhale, exhale, pushing the wrists to the heavens, getting a nice stretch along the side of the body. Inhaling here, So we'll do one more in a cycle like this, and then we'll twist. And now the twisted one. As we push down, we turn and look behind. Exhale, we're at the front. Inhaling. Exhale. So the hand pushes down, come back behind the hips as we twist the spine. We come back to the front. And we'll do one more cycle. come back and we're here so that was divide heaven and earth one of many <laughs> variations there are many variations for all of these movements these and these are ones that my teacher taught me gather the Sun and press the earth this is the next one so all the ones so far we've been standing tall now now this one we actually bend over and we've been standing in our standing in Wuji stance and so there will be more variety coming up shortly. So gather the sun and press the earth. For this guy, we gather the chi from the heavens. We cross the wrist. You bring the elbows below the ribs. And you scrub from the ribs to the side with the elbows and the wrists. So this is important because this is the liver meridian ends right here just below the ribs. So it comes up from the body, up the inside of the legs, up the front of the torso and ends right here. And so what we're looking to do is stimulate the liver meridian by doing this movement here. So there's a purpose to, to all of the stuff that we do here. All right, so let's gather the chi from the heavens. Bring it in to the liver meridian. Cover the kidneys. Lift the ribs. Look to the heavens. Exhale down the back of the hips, the back of the legs little toe side of foot and then tucking the chin tucking the tailbone inhale we come up with a turtle back one vertebrae at a time and we drop the chi in to the brass basin so inhale gather the chi from the heavens exhale Inhale, we come up. 
and exhale. Inhale, we gather in the chi from the heavens, scrubbing the end of the liver meridian, covering the kidneys, coming down the bladder meridian, and then inhale, coming up the kidney meridian. Inhale, we gather the chi. So inhaling, exhaling. And there may be a pause here if that seems right for you. Exhale. Perhaps another pause here. Inhale. And exhale. So we'll do two more like this. And last one. So we gather the chi from the heavens. We stimulate the liver meridians, bring the chi to the kidneys. And then exhale, you bring the, the chi down the back of the legs, the, kid, the bladder meridian, into the earth. Then inhale, we draw the chi up from the earth, up the kidney meridian. And exhale, we drop the chi in to the brass basin. So the brass basin, you know, the kidneys and the, the brass basin, this area of the body is considered the battery. This is where all the energy is stored and so we're always looking to bring energy into this area below the navels and into the kidneys it's it, the area is known as the lower dn10 which implies that there must be an upper well there is there's an upper it's up here in the, in the top of the head and there's a third one the middle dn10 and it's here just right around the heart right roughly in this area of the body as well but we're always looking to rejuvenate, recharge, if you wish. And so that's why a lot of times we end up with the hands roughly in this area when we're doing our various Qigong movements. So that was gather the sun and press the earth. Next is pull bow, shoot arrow. And we need to be in horse riding stance here. So one of the ways to get there is we step out into our stacking of the bone stance so the knee bent hip over the ankle this leg straight so the stack of bones the ribs the hip the knee the ankle all one above the other and we come to the center here we turn the feet out 45 degrees and then bring the heels out behind the toes and so this is horse riding stance and there are many flavors of horse riding stance as well there's this one and there's also the Taoist horse riding stance, which has much narrower hands, hands much narrower feet. Uh, but anyway, this is the one we're doing today. So, pull bow, shoot arrow. Inhale, we bring the hands up, palms together. Exhale, we slide down a wall. So the knees come forward. You keep the shoulders over the hips as much as possible. And the elbows, the wrists, and the shoulders are all about the same height. And you can lower down as much as is comfortable for you. Now, hold the bow with two fingers pointing and two fingers tucked in. Same on this hand. Pull the bowstring back to the ear. Bring the shoulder blades together. So I got wrist, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, hand all in the same line. And I'm looking at this hand. And then exhale. We release and the hand goes up halfway. 
Inhale, we rise up. Exhale. Inhale, pull the bowstring back to the ear on the inhale. Exhale. So that's one. Exhale, we slide down that wall. Again, as we're comfortable. Inhale, pull the bowstring back. Bring the shoulder blades together. Open the chest. Exhale, we release. Inhale. Up. Exhale. Knees come forward. Shoulders stay over the hips. Inhale. And exhale. We rise up again. And we're going to do one more cycle. But this is not the beginning. So this is the beginning of the end. And this is the end of the end. So that was pull bow, shoot arrow. And if you go looking around on the internet for pull bow, shoot arrow, you're going to see a wide variety of movements. And they all have the same goal in mind to get the chi moving from the core out to the extremities and also work on strengthening up some various muscles and so on. So, next one is cat gazes at the moon. There's a vertical version of this and it's called wise owl looks back. And so for wise owl looks back we turn and we look behind. So it's a nice twist to the spine. And it's inhale here and it's exhale like so. And cat gazes at the moon, we do the same twist to the spine, but the torso is parallel to the earth. And <laughs> the cat gazes at the moon, because we're looking straight up. And in my case, I have a light more or less directly above me, so I'm looking at that light in the middle of the ceiling. I'm not looking out the window behind me. And so when we twist, we're doing this sort of twist. It's a common you know, oops on the part of folks that are just learning that to actually look this way when they're bent over rather than looking that way. So let's give it a go here. So you bring the hands to the knees, thumbs on the inside, fingers on the outside. And we lengthen the body. So we're doing a dragon's back here, stretching the front of the body. Doing a turtle back stretch, the back of the body, tuck the tailbone in, nice stretch to the spine. Then we come to a neutral position here. 
Inhale, we look to the earth. Exhale, you drop the shoulder, turn the head, and look to the light in the middle of the ceiling above you. Inhale, look to the earth. Exhale, we drop the shoulder, turn the head, and we look up. Inhale, we're here. And exhale, so you want to keep the ribs away from the hips. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, we look to the earth. Exhale, we look to the heavens. Exhale as we drop the shoulder, turn the head, and look to the heavens. So we'll do one more cycle like this. And one more, and then we're going to try a variation on this. So inhale. Exhale. All right, so the variation here is we've been keeping the hands on the knees. And now what we're going to do is as we drop the shoulder, we're going to reach for the calf, reach for the ankle, or maybe reach beyond, depending on what's going on with you and your body today. So inhale here, drop the shoulder, and reach across, turn the head, look to the heavens. Inhale, exhale. If this variation doesn't work for you, yeah, stay with the previous one. And if you wish, you can reach beyond the foot. And I'll do one more cycle. And we come on up. So that was Cat Gazes at the Moon with three variations around how much we're going to be twisting our spine. And now King rides his horse with fiery eyes. And we're still in our horse riding stance here. And so for this one, we bring this hand and make a light fist. We're holding the reins of the horse here in front of us. So the second knuckle and the sternum are in a straight line going out from the body. And my gaze is fixed on the horizon over the second knuckle. The other hand is here, palm up. Make a light fist and bring it back by the ribs. And so this hand that's by the ribs is going to be scrubbing the liver meridian again, the end of the liver meridian just below the ribs. So inhale here. Exhale. Inhale, we come up to the elbow, out to the wrist, turn the hands over, exhale, our gaze stays fixed on the distance. Inhale, we rise 
up. Exhale, we lower down as we stare to the horizon. And we'll do one more cycle, starting here. Last side. And that was King. He rides his horse with fiery eyes. And we're done with horse riding stance, so let's bring the feet back together, back into that narrow stance here. The feet more or less under the hips. So the last movement in the eight pieces of brocade is King shakes his body. So for this guy, we're going to be lifting up and dropping sharply on our heels. <laughs> you want to make the floor shake if at all possible. So the knees need to be soft here, that very slight bend. The tailbone tucked in, belly button pulled in as well. What we're looking to do is have the vibration from the heels crashing on the earth go all the way up the spine, up into the top of the head. You want to feel the vibration through the entire body here. Importantly, keep the tongue away from the teeth, keep the teeth together. And so we also bring some chi to the surface of the palms by rubbing vigorously. We cover our kidneys with the fingers pointing down so it looks like this. We lift the heels and we crash three times with the knees ever so softly bent. You should feel the legs shaking, the abdomen shaking, the cheeks, the hair. I haven't got much left, but anyway, the hair moving on the head. What this is doing is it's breaking up any adhesions that's developed between the skin and the bone skin and the muscles, the muscles and each other, the organs and the abdomen. So we're trying to shake all that stuff and make it a little more flexible. So you want to get the fascia able to move. Fascia is kind of sticky stuff. And if we sit around too much, it gets kind of stuck together. And so we're using this to help move that and get a little more flexibility and get rid of a little bit of pain. The other thing it does is when we crash down like this is that it helps to realign any joints, <laughs> not so much in the arms, but in the torso itself. So if you have some slight misalignment going on, this sort of movement will help over time to gradually bring it back into place. So let's do a bunch. So inhaling, exhale, You want to rub together, generate some heat so that when you bring the hands to the kidneys, you can feel the heat. So two more. Last one. 
All right. And that turned out to be movement number eight of the eight pieces of brocade. So which means that we're done with that part. So let's pull down the heavens. So inhale. And exhale. Once more. So now we're going to look at the healing sound for, for winter and the associated movement and the associated animal with that. So the sound is Chu. So C H U. And the animal associated with this is bear. But in the, and we'll get to the bear in a moment. We're going to focus on the chu to begin first. And the emotion we're looking to take care of is fear. And it's the kidneys and the bladder where, where fear sort of resides. And that's why we're here and uh, working with this particular emotion, with this healing sound. <clears throat> So for this guy, you bring the hands, so this is inhale, cover the kidneys, lift the ribs, from the side looks like this, so inhaling, So that's the healing sound looking to help manage, reduce fear. And so chew is the sound that we're working on. Now there's an animal associated with this healing sound with this season as well, and it's bear. But for this guy, sometimes it's better to be in the stacking of the bone stance here because we're going to be working on a twist here. And so it's inhale. We bring this hand up, you bring this hand over here, so roughly by ear, roughly, you know, towards the elbow. Inhaling. Chew. Come back to the front, we change hands. Inhaling. Chew. We're working on, as part of this twist, to actually be stimulating the kidneys here. So let's do it once more like this. Chew. Chew. All right, two things to add to this basic movement. One is the bear, we, we make a bear claw here. The hand is in a bear paw. And so we've done one earlier where it looked like a staple because we had like a tiger. And so it's got those big nails. But the bear's claws stay out all the time. And so what we're looking to do is have like a scooping palm here, but it's more like this. And so we're grabbing a big beach ball, if you wish. So that's the first part. The second part is there's a color associated with this season as well, and that's that dark blue and black. So we're drawing in fresh chi, that nice dark blue, and we're expelling that turbid, grungy, black chi off to the horizon. So we're getting rid of all the bad emotions, all the excess motions, getting rid of the, the waste from the body as well. So with those thoughts in mind, the color, dark, a nice, clean, dark blue on the way in, and a grungy, dirty black on the way out, and that bear claw. So let's get the bear claw going. Inhale. Chew. And again. Chew. 
once more. Choo left side. Choo and we come back to the front. So that's the healing sound and the for the winter season. Chu C H U and it's intended to resonate with the kidneys and the bladder and to help manage the emotion of fear. So now I see by the clock that we're pretty much out of time. So we're going to be doing our five direction meditation here to wrap up for today. So you want to be in that stacking of the bone stance. Knee bent, hip over the ankle and this leg straight. We have a little bit of side to side movement here and this makes sure we do it safely and do it well. So we start here. Inhale. We advance. Exhale. We retreat as we bring the hands to the hips. Inhale. We move to the left. Exhale. We come down to the hip. And as always, we watch the hands. And then we stay in the center. Exhale for a count of eight. So this is early summer. Exhale, winter. Inhale for spring. Inhale for fall. and inhaling for the center. The red phoenix straight ahead. The dark blue black turtle behind. The green dragon to the left. The dark silver gray tiger and the yellow golden center. And we'll wrap up last time. And that's the class for today.